Chapter 8, Mishnah 3. The Mishnah now discusses cases in which milk was actually cooked with meat. If a drop of milk fell on a slice of hot meat in a pot, and that slice is not in the boiling soup, but lying on top of another slice that is in the soup, if the drop is large enough to give a flavor to that slice on which it fell, that is the slice that 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 is the slice is not 60 times as large as the drop of milk. It is all forbidden the slice on which the milk fell as well as the rest of the food in the pot. This is because the milk at first is absorbed only by the top slice, making it into a slice of meat and milk, and the flavor of that forbidden slice, which is on top of a second slice that is in the soup then goes through that second slice and into the rest of the food in the pot and makes the rest of the pot forbidden as well but if he stirred the pot immediately after the drop of milk fell on the top slice before the milk had a chance to spread through the top slice alone and make it forbidden then it is only if the drop is large enough to give a flavor to that entire pot of food that it is forbidden since he stirred the pot immediately, the milk does not concentrate first in the top slice, but spreads immediately throughout the entire cooking pot of food. Therefore, the milk does not give a flavor to any of it unless all the food in the pot is less than 60 times as large as the drop of milk. The Mishnah now discusses a case of meat and milk that is permitted. As for the udder of a slaughtered animal, a person may cut it open and remove its milk, and he may then cook the udder with other pieces of meat and eat them, even though some milk remains in the udder. If he did not cut it open and remove anything for it, not even a rabbinic, I'm sorry, if he did not cut it open and remove the milk, but simply cook the uncut udder by itself, he does not transgress anything for it, not even a rabbinic prohibition. The rabbis prohibited the milk that is still in the udder only with other meat, not with, the, not with just the meat of the udder itself. A somewhat similar ruling in a different case. As for the heart of a slaughtered animal, before a person may eat the heart, he must cut it open and remove its blood, i.e. the blood that is in the cavity of the heart, because it is forbidden to eat an animal's blood. After removing the blood from the cavity, he may prepare and eat the heart itself as he would prepare and eat any other meat. If he did not first cut it open to remove its blood, but ate the heart as is, he does not transgress a car's prohibition for it. The Mishnah ends with a similar statement regarding the case of Mishnah 1 above. If someone places the meat of a bird with cheese on the table, he does not put himself in a situation where he might transgress a negative commandment. Certainly, he may not place the bird meat with cheese on the table, as we learned in Mishnah 1, but he cannot come to transgress a biblical prohibition in this case because cooking bird meat with milk and eating them is not biblically forbidden, as the next Mishnah will say.